Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, today I'm going to work again on my um, unfinished projects, 52 tags that I did a few years back. I've got two more to go, this being one of them, that I'm going to create a page for him to nestle in that then can go into my big journal which holds the 52 of the tags that I did with the Anne Books project. So, episode two, I've got this little bunny. Now, he's sitting in a garden and I used some um, fabric, well, what do you call this stuff? I don't know. Um, uh, it's, it's just slipped my mind, goodness me. I used some of this shiny fabric <laughs> and created some little flowers. So I found that again from when I did the project. So that's on my table. I then picked up this piece of fabric. It was about the only thing in the cupboard of um, fabric that I had that matched these tones because they're not super bright. And then I spotted this, which also sort of tones in with those pinks and it's a little bit muted. So I've got this old table runner. <clears throat> I've got this fabric, that fabric, and then when I was hunting this out, I found this last little bit, it's like a scrap, which sort of works in as well for the tones of everything. So I'm not sure where this is heading. I'm not sure how I'm gonna piece this together, but this is the size we need to make our panel. So I guess Bunny, I did have this doily too on my desk whether it suits or not, it sort of is in the right tones. So anyway, I know I want to incorporate this and I know I want it to be, I want to include all of this detail. So this piece in its entirety, I believe is going to somewhat probably overpower the whole thing because I think I need it to. And then maybe these fabrics just pop in around. I, I don't know. That's what I'm going to figure out. I'm pretty confident I could cut that through there. And I won't regret that. So let's grab my fabric scissors. And do that. Let's just make a decision. That's coming off of there. All right, these were really big in the 80s, or the 70s, 80s. They were often gifts for newlyweds. I've seen them around quite a bit in op shops, so I don't feel bad. It's certainly not a heritage piece. It was part of my family's stash of doilies and things, but it's not a heritage piece. Do I lift that up? And then do we just patch in I sort of really like this floral. I'm not going to see much of the floral. Maybe I just can't get that in. Maybe I'm better off working with just some of these pieces. I don't know. I do not know. I like that position. I feel like he's a bit more nestled in a canopy of flowers. I probably feel okay with covering. Let's get rid of that sewing machine edge. I sort of want to create something that I can embroider or do something with him. Might get rid of that break this piece down a little bit. Do I then, I don't know. What's in my box of tricks here?
Now if I like that, maybe it's too big. Maybe I've got to break that down even more. I like the look of it in the way that it sort of feels like it could be soil. But I also like the flower component of it as well. So sort of a bit of a... If I get that on that corner... I think it needs to be more predominant, not tucked under. Do I need to square that up? Which means pulling it more out here. I definitely want the tag to sit there. I'll tuck that under there and then we find something to go out in this corner. Maybe that's the way I gotta go. Maybe this piece. It's tucked in over here. It's just part of the background and this piece. I don't know. I don't know. It's pulled right out there. Hmm. Well, maybe I've got to do a little bit more layering. See, there's all embroidery on this fabric as well. Let's just take a little morsel of this. Don't mind that. It's not straight, but probably doesn't have to be straight, but it's bugging me that it's not. Okay, I bought the bunny further down. Yeah, I like that. Got gathered. Gathered. Um, I just noticed that that in there is some gathered calico. I wonder if I grab my bucket of calico, do I do, let's have a little play with this. There's a piece of lace that's lying out on the table that needs, oops, 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 oops. just knocked container everywhere. Got a piece of this lace that's lying out. I wonder if I put that down next. I'm just working in this corner at the moment a little bit. I like that touch of pink there and I like how those embroidered flowers. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can sort of see. Oh, there's embroidered flowers there. I like maybe that. No. Maybe I'll go bring that up on top got enough of this edge showing it's not like it's <clears throat> lost bring them over a little bit kind of drags that pink out <clears throat> I do like how that there is plain and I like how it's sort of heading elements from this getting dragged out. And I'm just wondering what this would look like gathered. Let's break that down a little bit more. And then let's, let's run a gathering stitch through it. Got this linen still on this needle that might be enough to do the trick give that linen little piece of linen thread 
a home then. Now let's do a running stitch down this little morsel of calico or muslin. If you're overseas, it's referred to as muslin, but I believe it's the same creature. UK, I think you guys call it calico too. So I'm guessing that's where we got that word from, from the English. So let's run a little stitch. These tags are just such a great resource that when you're doing a project and you're a little bit stumped for an idea, I flip through these projects and I see little details that I thought of on the day, but you just can't remember all these things. And it can often reappear in another project. It's like a sampler. I believe the videos for that project are still available. So if you haven't done it, I'd highly recommend you take the time and just have a play with it because I learned so much. Some things I was like, oh yeah, I've done that a hundred times. But what it did do is made me revisit that technique. And because you're restrained to a small space like this tag, it was really quite interesting at how I had to think through the project because I only had a tiniest of spaces to put things. Okay. I'm liking that. Will it look good on the piece? Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So what I might do is I'm going to go through to the other side. And I'm going to knot that off. And then I can jiggle the gathering along a little so that it looks semi-even. Then what I might do is re... Oh, I'll find all these threads that I used, all these colours. Don't know if I'll have any of these little flowers around anymore, but I'll have a little look. Actually, that guy there, I think, is big yeah look that little fella there is his mate okay <clears throat> so this section of the piece is like an enlarged version of the tag so what I think I'll do is I will embroider through here the elements that are pretty much on here to some degree. I might even drift just a few down in here. So the garden has expanded, is what I'm trying to say. Now, if I cut that, it's so nice just to have that plain, I think, because it's, it's so pretty. I remember this being around as a child on um, the top of the piano. So it certainly has some memories there, but they were everywhere. Like even now when I go through op shops, uh, I even this may not have been the piece on the piano, but it, oh boy, it feels familiar. Okay, so that is going to be pinned into there like so. Okay, so I think we're getting a plan now. It's all about making the tag feel like it's part of the background was my challenge to myself. Finding a little home for all these pieces. Might even tuck that little bit there. Why not? The tag can move now because we've sort of got ourselves a bit of a, a working plan here, get these pins in. Okay, so that just all needs to be stitched down. Do I need this? 
this piece? Probably not. I think I think I'm going okay without that and I don't think I need this doily. I don't think I need any more of that. Or do I need a little piece to come up? Just a little random snippet stitched. No, I really, I'm enjoying the fact that that's so clean up there and the doily is the feature and there's this just this little story happening down here. I like him too, the big sister, and then some little stitches. Okay, so let's get this background stitched in. So I need needle and thread. <clears throat> Where's my needle? There it is. Oh, I feel so good to get some of these finished projects done. If I carry on the way I'm going, I will get the second one, or the third one done, and the book will be done. Finished, finished, finished. The other project that I might dig out while we're in the vein of finishing things is my red book. There's some work that can be done in that, so... I think the next series following on from finish these projects, Corinne, before you start something new, because the Roxy Creation project will be quite, quite busy because I'm going to do, you know, quite a few little projects within it using the girls' prompts. So there'll be snippet rolls everywhere, I think. So it would be good to get this Anne Books project squared away as I'm, I am sick of picking up that journal and bits fall out because nothing is in there secured. So I'm going to have this done and then I might grab my red, red work <coughs> project, my journal, and do some more work in that. Whether I get it finished or not doesn't really matter because it's a bit of an ongoing thing. I do want to revisit the way that it, the journal is constructed. I'm not a real fan of how I've put the spine together in it. Every time I pick it up, it just doesn't feel nice in my hands because there's a hard piece of cardboard buried within the fabric to create the spine. And then the spine cover, or the, the journal cover, is very flip-floppy. It just doesn't feel good in my hands. So I wouldn't say I'm real happy with that. So I think part of the Finish the Red Book will be remodel the actual journal itself. And maybe with that happening... It might sort of come together. I may not actually need much more work in it because if I fix, well, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but I just feel like if I was to put it in a bookcase, it wouldn't stand. That's my first issue because of that piece of card has no, there's no hard cover to back it up. And because it's so big, you're probably wondering, if you've just joined my channel, you're probably wondering, what is that girl talking about? I'll just stitch this and I'll have to show you. I'll show you at the end of the video. Stay focused, Corinne. I'm getting sidetracked. So I've just done some little invisible stitches there. So I'll just come up into this embroidery within this soft pink fabric and pop a couple little stitches. That'll just hold the piece in place until I get my embroidery cottons out and I'll do some decorative stitching around that to make it look a little bit more fancy. I'm using a beading needle, so I talk about make it hard for myself. But that is now secure. So we can remove that pin. 
And I've just tucked that little piece of calico that was left over in there just because, you know, because. So I'll just put a few little stitches. Get rid of that needle. <clears throat> Where is my needle? There it is. All right. There it is. Okay, so that's just to hold all of those little pieces in position. Now I can sort of think about the decorative stitches that I would use. I still have a little bit of that linen thread left. Maybe, maybe I could do some overcast stitch or some whip stitch with that. That'd be... Quite a nice detail, I think. So that's all secure now in that corner. While we're in the process of securing things, I might just do that other side. If I come down through the decorative part of that doily. That'll catch that piece of fabric tucked underneath. Okay, that's good. That's not going anywhere, just those itty bitty stitches, but underneath the fabric, you can see I've jumped quite a distance. So I often get questions about what is this invisible stitch that I refer to. So for those who are new to all of this, it is just when you do a tiny little stitch on the surface, but your needle scoots through to a maybe a centimetre away and then you come up and you do a tiny little stitch. So no one would know that you've even placed a stitch there. But you, on the back, you have scooted along to a new location where you've popped up to do another tiny little stitch and then back down you go. And it just really... I guess for want of a better word, laminates the fabrics together. And then knot it off, a couple little knots. Okay. <clears throat> now I might just, so this doesn't wriggle I want to find a piece of lace to go through here too. Something just to finish that. I'll worry about that at the end. Just need something. This has got a nice edge here. Okay, so I'm just going to run some invisible stitches in a few other key spots. Because they're tiny little stitches, you could sneak in around that flower there and no one would know that you were there. But I'm going to just run a few here and that'll square up this corner. It's very boring viewing for you. So if you did have something better to do, you're more than happy to scoot along to the end of the video and you'll see the piece finished. Because all I'm doing now is a bit of prep work. Just to get the few key elements in position. I should put my little embroidery scissors out here. Alright, so that's secure. I might come up to this corner here. 
and just a few little stitches that'll hold it. Okay, so that's secure. I might just scoot along there. I won't do anything at the top yet because I have a feeling I might find a trim or a lace or something that can tuck in up there just to decorate the top of this piece. But we'll see. May not need it. I do like the fact that it's a little simpler up here. At the end of the day, it's finding a home for the tag. It doesn't need to have the whole piece stitched. Underneath all of the tags in the big journal is heaps of doilies. I use them as like a background. I have the calico there with the pages cut to size and then I collaged lots of doilies over that calico. Then the tags went on. So when you turn the tag over to see what day and what the prompt was, underneath is lots and lots of doilies that peek through. I really love. It was finding a home for some nice pieces. I, I, I like doing that when I do a piece of stitchery. Instead of just stitching it straight into the book, sometimes I do lay doilies on those pages as well. I think they're just lovely. I'll have to find some... Oh, here's some thread that matches. We'll see. This little bit of gold might bit good just as a highlight so it's a DMC cotton geez it's long don't need it that long how many strands is that two and that's probably pretty good because I am stitching through a very soft piece of fabric I'm just thinking I might do a running stitch. Just a little, or should I do a whip stitch? I might do a whip stitch. Can you even see? Yep. A really small one, because that fabric will fray. So it won't hurt that I secure that quite well it could pretty much disintegrate not that you know it would because it's in a, a book like it's not going anywhere it's just to bring a touch of that pink into the background from those little flowers Well, it's a shame I wasn't on YouTube when I did that project because I really enjoyed it and it would have been good to have those videos because um, I certainly learnt a lot and I, I sort of discovered new stitches and <clears throat> it would have been nice to have them as a series of videos that I could also refer back to on what I did with each of them. But um, I wasn't on YouTube then. I've only been on YouTube. Oh, it'll be, it'll be a year in February. So time has flown. <clears throat> but the making of this book that holds all of these tags is on YouTube. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. <clears throat> If you go to the playlist, you'll see Anne Brooks as a file. And in there are any of the projects that have been inspired by Anne and things like that. Oops, that's a little bit tight. Just back that off a little bit. That stitch. So my little bunny... Is finding 
coming home. He's actually the 53 third tag to be precise because the project was 52 52 weeks in a year a prompt every week I'm sure you all pretty much have done the project because there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of us that did it and when I started making the video series for the, the journal how to store your tags there was a group of ladies down in Melbourne at a lifestyle village that were doing the and books project and they were getting to the point where they were all starting to wonder what they were going to do with all their tags and then I, they found me on youtube making a, a journal so the girls did that their versions and the leader of the sewing group reached out to me and said oh corinne we're following along with Anne's project and we've found you and you're helping us sort of work out how to store these little tags and I had just released my patterns of the scrappy rabbit and I was using the outline of the rabbit pattern and I decided to make 53rd tag as a bit of a hello girls thinking of you as you've been stitching away and we're all in lockdown so everyone was sort of stitching so I was chatting to this group leader and I said, look, I'll do an extra tag just for you girls. So I did a video on the rabbit, the 53rd tag. And what do I say on the back? For the girls. Yeah, 53 tags. And it was for the girls down in Melbourne in their lifestyle village. A bunny. Might have even been around Easter. I was fairly new to what I was doing on YouTube, so I'm pretty sure it was around Easter. So it was just a little bit of fun. So I might put this piece on the back page of my journal. And then it's sort of like the, the last piece to the puzzle. So that's worked out well. I like that little gold edge let me bring it up to the camera just a little gold stitch i'm going to get a little bit more of that mustardy color where's my needle gone i'm going to do the same stitch across the top there i have to keep an eye on the time i've got plenty of time plenty so let's do a little overcast stitch through here as well and that'll secure this down. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. I'll go right around the outside of this fabric because that'll just stop it from fraying. Oops, just as I was getting a rhythm going, it's come unthreaded and I've got a knot. Oh, I tell you. That's the infuriating part of embroidery, isn't it? If you could just thread your needle and then away you go. do that corner stitch there but I do need to get my scissors and just trim this a little it's started to fray already doesn't take much it's quite a coarse fabric so when the fabric's so coarse the the um, 
the threads can easily just come apart. Now I'm just going to come out onto the fabric itself and just whip down that side. I probably haven't got enough thread to finish, but... Oh, goodness me. It's getting all roughed up, so it's getting harder to control all those threads. Okay, so let's just get down to this edge. And that'll finish it nicely. And I should have just enough to get down like so. Okay. Alrighty, I can knock that off. Okay. All right, so what we might do now, I'm just gonna close this door. It's my husband's making himself a coffee. So you don't need to hear the kitchen clanging. Might just get a little bit more of this gold thread again. And just stitch along here and up here. And that's the background secured. Before I get too far ahead of myself. Then I'll grab my pen and just sketch in a few little flowers. I need to dig out those buttons. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, goodness me. I want to dig out those buttons because I'd like to add... <coughs> oh, goodness me. Must be some fibres floating around here that have made me sneeze. I'm going to sneeze again. No. Nope. Yes. Oh. <coughs> oh, goodness me. What set me off? Must be something drifting in the air around my little nose here. That's just triggered me then. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll try and dig out some of those little bits and pieces that would have used. Pretty confident I've still got a couple. I'm going to sneeze again. Goodness me. Mm. Something's tickling my nose. Oh, now I'm rushing and I've made a mess of this. Isn't it the way when you rush? Oh, goodness me. Probably only get a few more stitches out of it. It's like the last of that scrap. This color is 422 DMC. Could be an old colour. Sometimes I do change their numbers because they change the colour ever so slightly. So it might be a case that it belongs to a new number now. It might be a slightly different, but it's a pretty, a pretty little. Gosh, I feel like I'm going to have a sneezing attack. That's ridiculous. There must have just been a little puff of fibres or something. That set me off. Okay, that's probably the best I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to end that off and I'll have to re-thread and get another little piece, but that's okay. 
What I might do is I'm going to stop the video now. I'm going to have to go for a bit of a rummage because, as I said, I did these tags, what, probably three years ago now. So I need to see if I can find some of these little elements. I know the buttons are still there. Then what I might do is draw in a few little flowers that match what I did and just add some buttons, just sort of do a little bit of embroidery in the vein of similarity. Just to extend that garden a little bit. So I'm just putting some general strokes there. And I'll go and dig out what I can. And then I'll come back and show you sort of how that sort of all played out. I do want to find some form of trim to go down this side. As for the top here, I'm thinking I might actually even just bring that back underneath and let the doily be the top. I think I will. I think I'm going to trim that off so that it doesn't compete and let the top of the doily be the finished. And then maybe I find something that sits in under here. So it comes along here and up here. I will need to place it in the book. I did have that in mind as well. So I do need to stitch him in place just to tie in that. So he needs a home. That's a definite. Here's some greens. So I should be able to match. Yeah, those greens will be very close to what I used. But I do need something underneath it all. You know, uh, a trim. But I... We need to have a look at the back of the book. So what I might do before I say goodbye, because it's only about 42 minutes in, is grab the book. So the front page that we did in the last video, that's, that's in position. So I've glued that down, so that's great. Now, this one we're working on is going to be, that's the last tag there, that's the next one. It is going here, so let's get it out. Move this into f shot for you. I'll back that camera out. Okay, so this piece is going to sit here. So I've got room there for something, not a lot. Oops, not a lot. I sort of need a fine lace can go through. That might even be a bit big because I don't want to cover those little, I'll find something. There'll be something in my stash somewhere that can just slither through there to finish that edge. Then I need something to come in here. Now, I know I'm going to need some calico. This is not big enough. That piece might be. I'm going to need to extend my page, I think. So that goes there, that goes there. There we go. So that needs to be stitched onto there. I won't do it now because I'll, I'll end up using the whole hour. So I'm going to add this extension. That'll hide the bottom of my back page of my book. I'll then find some decorative piece to go underneath there. And then I'll find all of the bits and pieces just to finish this little bit of embroidery that matches our rabbit tag. Where's the tag gone? Here's the tag. So that will sit there and I'll find something to go up there. So I might just pin that so I know where I've got to be. So that's the plan, guys. So what are we at? 44 minutes. I will 
leave you at this stage and then I'll be back with how this all came together. If I can find some of those pieces. I'm sure I've got those buttons, but I don't know about some of those other things. They've definitely got those beads. Yep, that's good. All right, let's get this big thing out of the way. There's one of the oops, there's one of the tags there worked into the piece on the spine. There's a video about that somewhere. So it's just picking up all of the different elements that I used and just expanding it out. So that was a lot of fun, that one. Okay, everyone. I'm getting sidetracked. I didn't end up showing you the red book that I was yabbering on about, but that's all right. It'll pop up in a video, and I think we'll rework that one a little bit. It's a bit puckery, but we'll get that flat. All right, everyone. Thank you very much, and I will see you all very, very shortly with how this all played out and came together. Thank you. Hello, I'm back and my tag has found its home. I've completed the piece and um, it's ready now to attach to the back of my uh, journal that's going to hold all of these 52 tags. So really pleased with the way it came together. I just mimicked some of the little flowers that were on the tag through this area, found some buttons and I ended up finding some more of the satin um, rosettes so that was a really nice touch to actually be able to drift it along and actually get the design a little bit bigger than what appears on the actual tag so I ended up extending my piece then I added this lace in with this tassel and then I put a piece down the side and then I'm just using the actual uh, table runner itself as the top of the piece so it's like a bit of a add-on trim to the bottom of an existing piece of embroidery. So a bit of a, a new idea if you've got something that you want to preserve. Say uh, someone in your family made this and then you can embellish the bottom dragging those colours down into your design. So pretty pleased with the way that's come along. So I'm just going to grab my book and I'll finish the video with attaching it. That one's now attached. It's all glued into position. That's not going anywhere. So I'm really happy with that. So we'll just go through to the back of the book. So we've still got one tag to go. I am considering putting this tag within the journal and pulling another one out. I'm not sure which one. I just feel like I've completed the whole flower thing and I want something a little bit different to work. So we'll come back to that in the third video and the last one for this series. And um, yeah, we'll see where we go. I was actually looking at this tag and having a go at doing some weaving. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It's all about the unfinished project. So who knows where this project will, will end up. Now I'm just going to bring that into shot there. Hope that I can... Might come up a little bit and I'm going to grab my glue, make sure my piece will fit. It should do if my measurements are correct. Yep, so that'll just peek out the top, that peeks out the bottom. Yep, beautiful. Okay, so I'm just using PVA craft glue. It's not an expensive one at all. Um, any white wet glue will do the job heaps of it around it's pretty much all the same so I'm just gonna squeeze some in it's sort of the last of it too I've had the bottle upside down all night to try and have it drip down to the bottom so I'm just going to spread this out even evenly I'll take my time because if it starts to get a little tacky it's actually a good thing because then it's less likely to seep through your fabrics. Not that it's a problem for this piece because I have, hello fudge, I have um, layers upon layers of embroidery there and fabrics. So for it to peek through, and I don't think it will really happen. But uh, if that was really wet and really thick, you, you do, fudgy, don't move the camera, pussy. He's such a naughty boy today. He's just agitated. I haven't sat down at all today. I've been doing chores and, you know, just racing about. 
and I've been waiting for a video to upload to YouTube before I could grab the iPad and film this last little bit. So I've just been doing chores and Mr. Fudge is saying, come on, why can't I have a bit of lap time? That's the attitude I'm copying at the moment. So it's looking pretty good. Just keep moving it around and it's starting, you can sort of feel that it's starting to get tacky. That's not going to go anywhere. Been a little bit over the top of the book because it was a bit damaged up on that top corner so it won't hurt for the glue to sneak up there a little. Okay, let's get our piece and get it positioned where we want it. That's it. Make sure it doesn't crash into the spine and just gently press it down and that'll grip no problems at all. Just attaching the tag, all I did was a few extra cross stitches. So those three at the bottom are on the tag and those three at the top, two of them are holding the tag up in that corner. Then I did a couple down here, one in there, just to pin that tag down into position. I think the first tag on the inside cover, I actually did some stitches. So this time I did some crosses. So there's the back page, now in position. So I'll let that dry overnight. And I think that's about all I'll get out of that, that glue. So that's good. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, that'll be good. So now it'll be what tag will I pick to become the next page? Because I think they are in order, which would be a shame to mess up the order, but it doesn't matter. Budgie. This weaving one actually sort of felt like I could work that technique of weaving into the seaside project that I've got planned for later in the um, month or two. I'm just wondering if I have another play with it now and make it part of the journal because it probably would be a good way of testing that this is actually something I do want to do. What an interesting concept where we we got the tag and we created the downward stitches and then just wove all sorts of things of interest within it. And I really enjoyed it. It was quite, quite interesting. And I have a bit of this yarn left, but I guess if I made the project, I might use most of the yarn and then I wouldn't have it for that seaside because this color scheme would be perfect. So I don't know, think about that. <clears throat> What else would catch my eye here? Oh, the gold one. Yeah, that thread's a pain to use at the best of times. So I don't think so. Don't know. That was fun with all the circles. We got rings and knotted the embroidery cotton around the rings and then built up the design from there. Something on denim. I've sort of done the neutral ribbon embroidery. I do want to do some more ribbon embroidery, but I don't want to do it in mass because that just would take hours and hours and hours. So I just don't know. So I like this one too. I like the tones, the greys. Maybe I could expand on that. Then there's the whites. That, that prompt was just all white. I don't know. I'm not going to make a decision. Not today. That's coming up a little bit there. We might just add a touch of blue glue in there just to help that secure down. I'm not going to make a decision today. I'm going to see how I feel when I walk back up to the book. Pick a design. Create a piece of this size and then it will attach let's get stitched together and it'll attach here 
So that's the plan. So let's get this book actually back to where we were smearing the glue around. So this, I was wondering in the videos when I did this project and I actually spotted a tag, fireworks was the prompt, 2021. So if you did want to do this project, 2021 is where you'll find lots and lots of videos about the 52 tag challenge. So I expanded on the weaving in the Christmas prompts. I probably would have gone for that as a choice, but I've already exhausted weaving for now. I'm sure it'll reappear, but I think we can find something else to inspire us. Cut work, that was fun, but that's coming in the Vintage Blend Studio um, Vintage Sewing Prompt Project that I'm going to be participating in. There'll be nine prompts that Susanna will give us, one per month, at the beginning of each month. And you can make it into a quilt or a journal. And it's exploring old techniques of sewing, like cross stitch, uh, English paper piecing, the log cabin quilting, things like that. And cut work is part of it, which is what we did briefly here with Anne's project. So no use expanding on that because that's coming. So anyway, decision not for today. Not for today. If you can't make a decision, make it another day, I say, especially in the craft room. That's the rule. All right, guys, I will leave you alone. Thank you for joining me. We've got two of the projects done. We've got one to go to complete. We've just got to decide what we're going to do. All right. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video, part three. Bye.